you want to use LaTeX at the Art of Problem Solving. So the first thing you should do is log on to your AOPS account. Up at the top, look for the community link and click on that. And then page down until you see other forums and collections. And you are looking for the test forum where you're going to start a post, a new, new topic there. Interestingly, you don't actually need to post anything because they provide you with a preview pane that shows you what your LaTeX code will render as. You need to delimit your LaTeX code in your environment with dollar signs. So you put a dollar sign at the start of your LaTeX code and a dollar sign at the end. This is true for any of the forums or in the online classes. Notice that in this first example, it's very simple. A plus two equals four, and it comes out very nicely with some spaces inserted. LaTeX will actually ignore any spaces that you do or do not put in there. It will format it exactly the same way. Uh, so a lot of the typical uh, code that you would use with regular text also translates into LaTeX. So if you've been using Shift-6 to indicate um, an exponent, such as 2, Shift-6, 3, it'll format just the way you expect it to be with 3 as your exponent, and it looks like 2 cubed. For more complicated expressions, like 2 to the 10th power, if you use 2 and then Shift-6 and then 1, 0, it won't come out the way you intended. You'll have one in the right place as an exponent, but zero ends up being normal as a normal digit. And the reason is LaTeX doesn't know how many digits you have in your exponent. So in order to do that sort of delimiting, you use curly braces. So the open curly brace on the left side tells LaTeX that this is the start of the exponent. And then the closed curly braces on the right side tells LaTeX that that's the end of the exponent. And when we put, when we enclose the 10 between the curly braces, we see that we get both one and zero as our exponent and it looks the way we want to. The nice thing about LaTeX is it has a lot of predefined functions such as fractions. So in order to tell LaTeX that you want a fraction, you put in a backslash and then FRAC for fraction. Then you have again, the curly braces. You see those again here, the first pair of curly braces encloses the numerator, which in this case is one. The second pair of curly braces encloses the denominator, which in this case is two. If you forget the backslash, then what you end up with is it doesn't know that it's supposed to be looking for its predefined function, fraction function. So instead it writes out FRAC. So don't forget with your predefined functions to put in the backslash or it won't come out very well. That's pretty much the basis for using LaTeX and it's very similar for a lot of the other um, functions. Notice that all of these other functions uh, also have a backslash in front of them. So go to the AOPS wiki, LaTeX tutorial and symbols. Pretty much anything you need is going to be on this page. If for some reason you, you need something else that you're not finding on this page, you can just go to Google. So go to Google, type in what you're looking for. In this case, if I'm looking for the summation sign, I type in LaTeX summation. And this is the first result that I get from that Google search. I highlight this and I copy and paste it up here in my post. I'm going to refresh the preview pane, go down to the bottom, and let's examine the code. So we have um, backslash sum, that's the predefined summation function for LaTeX. There's this underscore, and then the curly braces enclose n equals 1. So it's pretty easy to see that whatever comes after the underscore ends up underneath the summation sign. Notice we have this shift 6 key again. And it looks like this reads infinity with a backslash. So it looks like it's a predefined infinity function. And it puts that on the top. And then we have 2 to the power of negative n. And again, negative n is enclosed in curly braces because it's more than one digit. And that's all there is to it. Good luck with, uh, with your LaTeX uh, at Art of Problem Solving.